What's up, everybody? Welcome to that Nintendo show. We just got done watching a Nintendo Direct, and uh, we're going to go over the highs and the lows, not really lows, of the Nintendo Direct. There was some lows. Were there some lows? Okay, well, we'll get there. My name's Mitch. Joining me is Richard. Hey, so I didn't mean to cut you off there, but yeah, there, there are some lows. It's okay. So you got to have the, the good with the bad, right? And Chase... Hello, hello. All right. So, 40 minute Nintendo Direct, 30 ish games announced during the showcase, some of which haven't been around for a very long time. Some of them have been in development for a very long time, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And we finally got the lid blown off of them. So, let's just start with the, the closeout special for today Metroid Prime 4 Beyond coming out 2025. Again, they announced this game. E3, back when E3 was the thing, E3 2017 with yeah. a logo, and that's been it. <laughs> we have not seen the, anything about the game. Yeah, this is, that was seven years ago, all almost to the yeah, almost to the year, uh, just a little, little past seven years now. Yeah, um, and it's got. I mean, it one of it's one of these games that like you look at it and go, okay, is this running on a Switch? Because but. it looks <laughs> really good. It looks like it's running at 60 frames per second, which is right. something I don't imagine that the Switch One is going to be able to do. I was about to say it is running on a Switch. It's running on a Switch Two. Yeah, <laughs> and I know. I know. So many people love that term. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's just a lot of little, just minimal things people have pointed out about how, like, when you're in like the morph ball and you're going through like tunnels and stuff, they've got all this other action and stuff going on instead of like just seeing you in the tunnel. And it's like, okay, there's a lot of stuff going on. And like, there's no frame rate dips in this yeah. trailer. <laughs> and that's like what people are latched onto. And it just says 2025, right. which guess what's coming out in 2025. Switch. Next, next hardware successor. So, <laughs> yeah. successor switch to whatever yeah. and it's like okay this is this is definitely a cross-gen game obviously and yeah it this is probably going to be something that's going to be there at launch unless it's like a holiday 2025 game but yeah, I'm, 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 sure. I'm expecting this to be a launch title for the for the successor yeah it really just depends on when it comes out because if it's going to be in like a holiday then of course yeah it'll it'll be there I feel like it's it's almost done away with something that I was really hoping for, and I could very well be wrong. But with a launch window of 2025, which is you know we're we're almost to July, so we're halfway there. And if it's going to be like a launch title, and that we're all thinking that we're we're seeing like a spring for the Switch Two, I love calling it that. Yeah. Then <laughs> you know, so here recently they released the Metroid Prime One remaster on the switch we're not getting a two and a three that was a remake oh is it a remake yeah they they re, uh, they remade that from the ground up oh sorry i thought that was a remaster so mm. i guess that's a no so yeah probably you know, not we're gonna get you're gonna have to get all your information from one and then we'll just gloss over the events of two and three and go into four i don't i don't know if i care for that i almost wish it hadn't have been a remake and they had just put in they had put effort into just doing a remaster because it came out for the Wii. You know, you had a collection that was prime one, two, and three. So I don't, mm, I kind of feel like they kind of dropped the ball on that because I don't know. I don't like that kind of inconsistency. Right. It leans in heavily on my Luigi's mansion thing where we've got two and three, but not one. Exactly. That was my gripe. Well, and to that, Oh, you're good. And to that point, though, you know, there's probably going to be a September direct and there's still time for them to do yeah, that. I mean, look so, at that. Yeah. Well, they, now, look, Metroid Prime 4 looks amazing. I don't want to take anything away from that. I was just hoping for like a like a one, two, three lead up to it. Right. And it's like I said, it's still possible. You never know. Or they could be like, hey, guess what? Nintendo Wii games are coming to Nintendo Switch online. Yeah, hey, yeah. yeah, they could do that. <laughs> And just do it that way and say, like, we're going to skip I mean, the GameCube because we mean, can, the Switch uh, is pretty much just rematch all these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at this point, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's Metroid Prime 4 is going to be a, a huge hit, I think, whenever that comes out. Because you've got like a, you know, Metroid 
for the longest time probably hasn't been one of Nintendo's like best selling system no, or no, no. system selling no. type games. But with the success of Dread and then Metroid Prime Remake, like I think they're seeing a lot more success in that franchise. Definitely. And uh, you definitely want to keep that ball rolling. And that's why I think it is. It, like I said, there's probably everything we saw with Switch 2 footage, or I'm assuming it is. Mm-hmm. But it's going to have to come to the Switch 1 because if you don't put it on Switch 1, you're leaving behind like 140 million ish players that you have the opportunity to sell this game to. Because not everyone's going to buy a Switch 2 at launch, especially if they like just recently bought a Switch or something. Right. So especially, I mean, yeah, knowing, gonna knowing, it, it knowing it's going to be backwards compatible, like, like that's one of the main reasons a lot of people have a Switch from PS4 to PS5 is because, I mean, there's not that many, like, you know, games that are exclusive to the PS5 that, you know, that's not already, it's not, not, not always, you know, a PS4 version, so. But, like, yeah, like, right. you know, like, like Switch games are going to be in development for a while, like a long time, just so that they cover, you know, the, the, the bases for Switch and the successor. Right. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about what they started the show off with. I never thought that we would get another Mario and Luigi game just because with the closure of Alpha Dream a few years ago. And during the direct, they made sure to bring up that it's been about nine years Mm -hmm. since the last new Mario and Luigi RPG game, because the last two that came out were remakes for the 3DS, uh, with that being the original Superstar Saga and also Bowser's Inside Story. But we're getting a new Mario and Luigi game. It's called Mario and Luigi Brothership, and surprise, it's coming out this November. So this is actually Nintendo's like confirmed big holiday game, uh, which it's not for everyone, but I mean, if you love Mario RPGs, it's been a great oh, yeah. year to love Mario it RPG really has games. <laughs> and uh, I've Again, never thought this was going to happen. I thought it was just going to be Paper Mario for a while. And this is the first time Mario and Luigi, uh, any of these RPGs, has been on a home console. So this is, uh, I'm super excited for this. Yeah. It's just so much so much fun <laughs> and silliness that's going to be brought around. Because, man, the humor in Mario and Luigi games, is it's, it's on another level. You know, I was going to say, you know, it looks amazing. And I like the other two. I'm not sold on the art style. It seems a bit odd to me. I've never seen Mario in an art style like that. And I think that's kind of distracting for me. I don't know if I really... It kind of is like Looney Tunes. Yeah, I don't know if I want to say like a (laughs) cell... I I don't know. It's not reminiscent of anything I'm familiar with. So it it throws me off a little bit. But I don't think there's such thing as a bad Mario and Luigi game, though. So... I haven't played all of them. I know that they've kind of got their their dark moments kind of like paper mario well. does for the people just don't people just don't talk about certain yeah, ones of those and i think that. that that mario and luigi kind of gets in that same boat but i don't like again but on the the gist of it though is that like a bad paper mario or a bad mario and luigi rpg are not like unplayable they're just steered the ship too far in a certain direction to where most people don't enjoy it, but it's not necessarily a bad game if you just look at it just as itself. But, if that makes sense. But in the grand scheme of things, as far as the franchise goes, I'm looking specifically at Paper Mario Sticker Star on the 3DS. Uh, you kind of veer too a little too far off to where your core fan base just disenfranchises. But I think that they've done a lot of stuff in good faith to try to bring people back think like uh paper Mar- i mean paper mario origami king was a good like kind of step back and doing but doing its own thing and then hopefully the thousand year door sells well enough to where the next time paper mario comes out it's in that same vein instead of doing super paper mario side scrolling stuff or again sticker star color splash kind of stuff I'm just like really, really excited to play it. I mean, I'm glad they started off the show with that. It was like a, it was. I feel like the show was like a big sandwich. Like they they started off strong. They they left one really good one in the middle, and then one at the very end. So, well, Chase, what is the one really good one in the middle? Uh, well, do you want to talk about that? I know you don't like talking about Zelda. 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, man, I don't, I don't, I don't like that franchise at all. I thought we were about to start <laughs> talking about Donkey Kong. What? Man. Oh no. We'll, oh, we'll, we can we'll get, there, get there. Yeah. We got some. We got some. We got some words to say oh, about God, that. Yeah. Now let's talk. <laughs> let's talk about Zelda. And for once, when we say we're talking about Zelda, we are talking about the lady herself, Princess Zelda, getting her own video game, The Legend of Zelda: Echoes of Wisdom, otherwise known as Legend of Zelda. Put beds everywhere you want. <laughs> Because that's pretty much the gist of what I got from this. Like, it's completely different than your typical Zelda game, but it's in the Link's Awakening remake art style. Looks gorgeous. I was really excited when I saw Link. we were getting a new Zelda uh, game, and I thought for at first it was like the Oracle remakes that we were thinking mm -hmm. we were going to get. And then, no, no, Princess Zelda's got a magic wand, and she can put things wherever you want her to put them. And it's blown yeah. away i was just yeah. not ready to get it's gonna be today. like a huge like almost like sandbox type style game i'm really excited for this yeah they showed off like you pretty much can take any item in the world i'm sure there's extents that you can't do it but you pretty much can take like boxes and the like beds like i said or even other enemies and can store them in your inventory of this wand and you pretty much use this stuff to get around the world and to fight other monsters and stuff and it's just a unique take like it's i think that they kind of said okay i know richard's not the biggest breath of the wild slash tears of the kingdom type of fan or the way that that zelda stuff goes but they kind of said okay we kind of reinvented the wheel in that form what are some of that stuff that we could bring over right to the 2D side. And so you look like um, when she's scrolling through all the different stuff that she can use, it's almost like the same menu you would use to attach different things to like your bow mm -hmm. in Tears of the Kingdom. Um, and you can pretty much just play the game however you want to, solve puzzles however you want to. There's no one set version of how to do any specific stuff. And I think that that's gonna be, every, I think they said it in the trailer that everyone's gonna have like their own yeah. way that they play this game. And I think that that's super exciting for that to happen to the 2D Zelda mm -hmm. side. I mean, it looks gorgeous, but they've taken Zelda and they've given her a wand that builds furniture. <laughs> so pretty um, much, <laughs> you know, we, we've seen her fight on horseback with a bow and arrow and she seems like she's pretty awesome. So, uh, I, I'm going to reserve. I mean, it looks like I said, it looks beautiful. I don't want to, I don't want to crap on it. Uh, but you know that they, they do say bad things come in three so hopefully after this one we'll break out of the whole bad zelda thing <laughs> at least in my <laughs> mind that no i mean i'm i'm gonna get it i'm sure it's gonna be great i just you know it's it's definitely a a direction that i i wouldn't have thought of not necessarily that zelda is the protagonist i kind of felt like that was coming anyway yeah but yeah. just the the fact that that's their you know e even even combat you know the way what i took from the trailer is that the combat you you don't even really fight at all you spawn these creatures just like you would spawn like a kitchen table or something like that so you know i'm, I'm curious to see what the limitations are i'm sure mm -hmm. there has to be something to balance it out because you know if something starts attacking you, you know, what's to stop you from spawning like 20 moblins, you know? Right. So, you know, I don't, <laughs> it's, it's going to be different. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be fun. I just, it's, it's curious how they went about it, but Nintendo has been on a roll here lately. So we'll see. They, they really have every single year just come out the gate swinging with something. And, and we've talked about this before on the show, but like some of these other companies, either they take years to get some good stuff out and then they have like dry spells like on the complete opposite end of this spectrum is like this is kind of like the year where playstation doesn't really have much going on but like microsoft is teed up to at least start having a pretty good second half of this year and then next year you know who knows what will happen next year but like nintendo every single year that the switch has been out has literally just fired on all cylinders and now we're that we're towards the end of the Nintendo Switch's life cycle as we're teeing up for what comes next. Like every single 
year they've announced they're starting to get more creative essentially is what i'm getting to and starting to branch out because they're saving all of their like their big guns for i'm assuming next year and so now they're like doing all like their smaller stuff and we get stuff like a new mario and luigi that's coming out this year we get a, a zelda game coming out this is actually coming out on september 26th mm -hmm. so not too much longer for this to wait come the out. zelda september 26th yeah yeah ah yeah and, you know that's something else too that i'll just throw this in there before we move on is that you know when you watch like a playstation show or a microsoft show they're like you know coming in 2065 so you've got <laughs> like a whole lot of time and everything and i feel like when nintendo announces something it's like it's on it's right at the door it's yeah it's usually like yeah they, they they've been really good about announcing things that are about three months out ish uh unless it's something like really big uh, Metroid Prime 4. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, no, like they, they've been doing, I mean, it's like, oh, there's, there's this game that's coming out in about three months, you know, and they build up hype to it. And then, you know, it, they, it's, that strategy has worked very well for them. Yeah. And in typical Nintendo fashion, in the with us knowing that a new console is on the horizon they announced a new system today <laughs> a uh zelda special edition nintendo switch mm -hmm. Lite that i really do not need to buy but they do this they'll be like oh yeah our new system's coming out in less than a year by the way get this collector's edition of our current system that'll just sit on your <laughs> shelf in six months yeah. but you know when i when i <laughs> they, saw that mitch i thought of you Mm -hmm. <laughs> I bet you did. I bet you did. It's like this dumbass is about to buy another Switch. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. We know you. <laughs> so yeah, that's true. So those were like your big three yeah. announcements. Now we got. We're gonna kind of steamroll through some of these games that are probably not like the biggest hitters. Um, I do want to touch up on one that was kind of leaked out a little bit ago. Uh, is that Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D is also getting a Dragon Quest 1 and 2 HD 2D. So you can play the entire trilogy of Mr. Erdrick on your Switch in all the HD 2D glory that it is. Uh, which is weird that 3 is coming out in November of this year, but 1 and 2 are coming out next yeah. year. I don't, I don't follow this stuff enough to know the exact order you're supposed to play so this stuff in. Yeah. And I watched the direct with my daughter, and it was funny because when they were talking about this stuff and they announced the Dragon Quest three, and then the follow up next year with the one and two, I, I turned to her and I was like, "What is it with Nintendo? And like, <laughs> why why would you not do one and two before you do three? And then, as if it was by some odd magic, the Japanese dude on TV explained that chronologically three takes place before one and two and that he thinks fans would follow the story better by playing it in that order and i was like wow it's, it's like he knew what i was gonna say <laughs> i must have missed that i didn't hear or read his, him his saying shirt that. <laughs> was very distracting it really was i, could, I was couldn't it? <laughs> figure out what the pattern was but yeah yeah that's the reason so yeah he explained it and it was weird just the timing because it was literally when i was thinking that that he decided to explain that. But yeah, apparently chronologically, you're looking at three and then one and two. So yeah. that's why you have that release. Well, interesting. And speaking of chronologically, um, Chase, mm. Donkey Kong Country Returns chronologically has released on Nintendo's past three systems. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also, uh, one of those is now the Nintendo Switch. And I feel like you and I probably had the exact same reaction to where it showed Donkey Kong. I saw, yeah, I saw like a 3D Donkey Kong game, and I was just like, "Oh my gosh, it's finally happening!" And then it was like the Wii version. And I was like, re "Like HD." I was like, "Oh my god, no!" Like, come yeah, on! Yeah. Like we just my my soul left my body, and I was just like, "Please, <laughs> please give us a new Donkey Kong game." <laughs> I mean, I think it'll happen I think so too, at yeah. some point, 
but it's just like they're just trying to hold people over. But like, come on, the two mainline Donkey Kong Country games, or just Donkey Kong games in general for the Switch, were a remake of a Wii one that's coming out soon, or sorry, January of next year, I believe, and then uh, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, which was a Wii U game. Like, that that's that's what's going on. But uh, Retro Studios, who I believe has been the the majority of like the Donkey Kong, they've done a lot of the Donkey Kong games recently. They do have their hands full with Metroid Prime yeah. Four now, so maybe that them taking over the development of Metroid Prime Four just kind of pushed Donkey Kong a little further away. But who knows? We'll. I'm sure we'll get a new one soon, but yeah, it was just kind of like a, a burn because yeah. they're like, yeah, this is a remake or I'm sorry, a remaster of the <laughs> Wii Donkey Kong Country Returns. Oh, and by the way, it's got the extra courses from the 3DS version. I would also, like, not, huh. be, I would also <laughs> not be disappointed with a current gen version of uh, Donkey Kong 64, like a remaster of that would be really cool. Please, yeah, that would, like, that that's would be what great. they should have done. <laughs> I would be, yeah, completely I'm, happy with that. I'm sure it's a lot easier uh, to remaster a Wii game versus yeah, a 64 game, but still. Like, if anything, why can't we get Donkey Kong Country Junk or Donkey Kong Jungle Beat and release some new Bongo <laughs> controllers? Like, I'd buy the crap out of that. Um, speaking of what I'm probably not going to buy the crap out of, <laughs> Super Mario Party Jamboree. And listen, listen, everyone on YouTube <laughs> watching this video. I love Mario Party. I love Mario Party. It's one of my favorite franchises. I love just being that guy to my friends and just screwing them over constantly. When Just when video games, not like a general <laughs> life thing. right? <laughs> and but it's Super Mario Party, which it's like the one of the worst Mario parties in my opinion because of motion controls and it's a this they changed the formula again they done a lot at the beginning of the switch kind of changing formulas and stuff and they rectified it by releasing Mario Party Superstars which was a great Mario Party game and now we're going back to this nonsense again and uh, yeah I'm just if they release another Mario Party with motion controls, and I'm like, ah, I can't. Ah, gosh, oh, I'm I'm at a loss I mean, of words. I mean, the last <laughs> the last party game with motion controls did really well. Called it was called uh, when everybody wanted to switch. Oh yeah, that was a... <laughs> that one went down to twenty dollars like the week after it came out. <laughs> look, I, look, when Super Mario Party was the only Mario Party game on the Switch. I have to give it credit. It was there in our darkest times, right? Because the Mario Party game before that was Mario Party 10. And that was the one where you were just stuck in a car the entire time. And that's like the lowest of lows. And Super Mario Party was changing it back up. And I think that that game actually did some stuff right. And I do have some praises for it. I think that the idea of each character having their own specific die was a great choice and they're all like do different effects and stuff but they changed like the main formula of how the game works every single mini game had motion controls in it you had to use a joy con like you couldn't play with a pro controller it was there's so many little nitpicks with it to where it just wasn't enjoyable and the boards were kind of boring too but i will say the mario party jamboree which just came out in october of this year uh, has 110 mini games. I believe it's got seven boards in it, five new boards and two remasters from Mario Party 1 and 2. And it does have a 20 player online mode, which is kind of nuts, but I don't think it's like the main Mario Party. But it's there's potential there. I probably will end up buying it just to see because I don't think every mini game has motion controls in it. At least I hope not. <laughs> Richard, you gonna pick this up? Play with your family? Oh no! Like Maddie really enjoys these, and we own a couple of them. And it's not that they're bad. I just, for some reason, every time I play one, I always feel like it's lacking in, in some regard. And, and I think it's because of the number of boards. Like I don't know why, but when I play one, I feel like there should be like fifteen to twenty different boards. But there's a 
What? Yeah. I mean, is that Go ahead. is that wrong? I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just I'm asking for too much, but yeah, I just, you know, I think that's fair. Like my idea was that instead of us getting a new Mario Party, they would just make an expansion for superstars and throw a couple more boards in it. Cause I think that is my yeah. only gripe with superstars is that there's only five boards. Like yeah. we always default to playing the same two or three boards and it gets repetitive after a while. But if they had just added more boards, then you have to add more characters, just more boards. And yeah, I would have been fine. Thing. Is that, you know, and that's, that's been my common gripe. You know, you can say there's 5,000 mini games and I'm just like, well, there's only like five boards. So, you know, I just, I don't know. That, that's been my, I mean, more than likely, uh, Maddie saw it, so of course she got excited. So um, <laughs> more than likely it will end up at the house. But yeah, I mean, they're fun. Uh, they, they really are. It's something that, that my wife will even play, who is definitely not a gamer. But yeah, you know, I, I kind of wish there was more of a, a DLC sort of thing instead of just releasing another game, which you got to swap out or, or switch over if you're doing digital, you know, whatever. If they could make it where it's all encompassing, man, that would be great. So this wasn't in the direct, but I did want to just touch up on something because you just said something that made me think about it. Do y'all ever play Jackbox games? No. I have before, yes. Okay. So there's like 10 party packs now. There's one coming out this year that's like an adult party pack. And they're doing this first on Steam, but they're making like a launcher for Jackbox to where you can access all 10 games from one app instead of having to switch back and forth. And... If they got to the point where there's like seven Mario Party games that you can all play on one system, they should totally do that. <laughs> to <laughs> where you could just yeah. like, oh, you want to play on this board? Okay, let's go boot up this Mario Party game or just something like that. Just to, if that's an option, they should totally uh, put that in. Just like uh, Nintendo adding the option for 17 and up games for the Nintendo Switch Online uh, for some new rated M stuff that just got dropped onto the service as of today. Perfect Dark and Turok are the latest N64 games to hit the system. I was actually, when I saw that the 17 up thing was happening, I really thought they were about to drop Conker's Bad Fur Day. <laughs> on there. Hey, it could happen. <laughs> it could happen. It's, it's, it would be wild to me if Conker showed up before Donkey Kong 64 <laughs> or Diddy Kong Racing. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're, they're all rare games. So they need to just do another rare collection and just dump mm. all of that like they did with the last time that they did that. But yeah, uh, Perfect Dark has online multiplayer now, just kind of like uh, GoldenEye did whenever that came out. I don't know how well that's going to run on the Switch. I think GoldenEye had some performance issues when doing that. We also got uh, Metroid 2. I'm sorry, Metroid Zero Mission, which is Zero a re Mission. which is a remake of the first game correct i'm not a yeah. metroid guy but that's from the game boy advance and the legend of zelda a link to the past and four swords which also will have online co-op which is that's something that they really needed to capitalize on like if they ever get to the point where like they do gamecube games and they want to put four swords adventures on the switch or switch to whatever on the online service it's got to have multiplayer like that game was so much fun to play by yourself, I guess, but it was a way more fun if you just got people to plug their Game Boy Advances into a GameCube and then play it. It was made for it. <laughs> I they, remember those days. <laughs> dude, it was wild. I never it was like almost like getting all of the infinity stones, like plugging getting four link cables, four Game Boy Advances, and a GameCube and just yeah, and it, you playing know, like, it on it, the TV. The GameCube set down on top of that thing that was, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, it was, the universe was complete back in those <laughs> days whenever that happened. But yeah, anyway. it, it was awesome. It was, it was clanky and yeah, but it was awesome. I mean, and it was just like, okay, it wasn't just for Zelda. Like you could do it for Pokemon and. Uh, right, yeah. What was the. Uh, well, I guess Wind Waker had a Game Wind Boy Waker component also. Yeah. There's some other ones like. Was it Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles? That's Crystal the other, Chronicles, yeah. That's the other big one. And so, I mean, there's. We need to somehow bring that back. I want to plug four switches into each other and then <laughs> I'll put it to a television and we all play. Like clunky. I mean yeah. clunky. I said clanky. What the hell's wrong? Okay. <laughs> I mean, you can use whatever words you want to. <laughs> anyway, uh, so Zelda uh, Link 
to the past in Four Swords, Metro Zero Mission, Perfect Dark, and Turok Dinosaur Hunter are all now on the Nintendo Switch Online service. Just make sure you sort by Rated M games if you want to play Perfect Dark or Turok. Let's talk real quick about this Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection Arcade Classics. Seven games in this series. I know some people that are just probably losing their mind over this right now. Sold! <laughs> The guy that you said was going through the roof. As soon as I saw it, I was like, yep, that's mine. <laughs> it's X-Men Children of Adam, Marvel Super Heroes, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of Super Heroes, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and The Punisher. Yep. Okay. I just saw, like, The Punisher on the list and was like, okay, that's a guy, not a game. <laughs> that was that was not, a, was not a fighting game. It was like a beat-em-up game, right? Yeah, that was like a beat-em-up, just like uh, X-Men Children of the Atom. Okay, they're not all like fighting games. So they're not okay. all fighting games, though. Okay, well, that makes more sense. I was losing my mind over here, just like you were when you probably saw that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I was like, yes. So, I love collections like that. Yeah. So we got... Also, another look at Nintendo World Championships NES Edition. Uh, Richard, you and I talked about this when we did our prediction thing, and there was one thing we had brought up about how, like, it didn't look like you could just play the whole game on here, yes, which I think for the most can. part is still true, but there's some yeah, challenges. Cannot. There's some challenges that are like, how fast can you beat that game on one life? Like, they, they briefly talked about, like, just beating the original Super Mario Brothers, but you can't lose a life. So, to some extent, you can play the full game, but I think it's under, like, strict conditions. Like, you can't just say, under, I want to play this game. <laughs> under very stressful conditions. Yeah. Is what it is. <laughs> um, again, that's coming out uh, next month. Uh, 150 different speedrunning challenges, over 13 different NES games. And then if you wanted to buy a physical collector's edition, it'll be available at the same time. So if you want that physical cartridge, I'm sure that'll... Uh, be a collector's item yep. at some point. All right, breeze through a couple of these. Basketball is coming to Nintendo Switch Sports later this summer. Uh, we got another look at LEGO Horizon Adventures, which is a PlayStation property coming over to the Switch. That was, uh, first of all, my daughter went through the roof with the basketball announcement. And then uh, second, yeah, I was, you know, is, is this how it starts? Is this how you get... PlayStation properties multi-platform. <laughs> you, you go the Lego route. Look, I don't know what fruit this will bear, but they did ask the guy that they interviewed from Guerrilla Games if this is the entry point to get Aloy into Smash Brothers, and he said all we need is someone to call and ask us. <laughs> <laughs> so the door is not completely shut. <laughs> They're getting a PlayStation rep on uh smash brothers which i feel like if they do that then they have to also pivot 180 degrees and go okay microsoft we want uh master chief or we want uh <laughs> whatever uh who knows who knows how that point up going i don't uh, you know i love lego i really do I, I love lego they're expensive but i love them but I don't know how hyped I am, you know, and maybe it's because of Lego Fortnite, but now now we've got Lego Horizon Adventures. Like, I'm not ready for like Lego Halo or Lego <laughs> Resident <laughs> Evil or any of this other stuff. Because I feel like th this opens the door to really anything. Yeah. Well, I think that they specifically said that they went for Horizon because it's not a rated M property. Hmm. Is it not? No, Horizon's T. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Which I think that's why they targeted it. Because a lot of PlayStation properties are rated M. Like, can you imagine, yeah. like, yeah, like God of War Lego? <laughs> no. Lego I God of War. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could see some scenes, maybe, but no, like, overall, no. <laughs> like, well, I was sitting here thinking about, like, what if they did, like, a Lego Fable or something? I think Fable's rated M also. So, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think that would work the way I'd want it to. Who knows? There's so many different possibilities with that, especially yeah. if you like Lego stuff. They can do pretty much anything with that. We got Fantasian, which is a mobile game that's being converted into a Switch game coming out this holiday. Uh, Tales of the Shire, a Lord of the Rings game where you get to be a 
live a peaceful life as a hobbit. I feel like you're you're definitely getting that one, bitch. Um, if today was opposite day, yes. Yeah, I'm, totally I'm sure. I'm sure at some point in that game, I bet you'll punch a tree. You get to create your own <laughs> hobbit and live out your life yeah, by gardening, go. fishing, <laughs> cooking, building relationships, solving <laughs> problems, outfitting yourself in your home, and more. Yeah, the more yeah. is the tree punching. Exactly. <laughs> no, look. I d- here's what I'm thinking, though. Hello Kitty Island Adventure, right? Yeah. Because it's like Animal Crossing, but Hello Kitty. And let's talk about how South Park predicted this game 10 years ago or longer. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch the World of Warcraft episode of South Park because Butters was playing Hello Kitty Island Adventure and they roasted him over it. And now they've made it into a real game. <laughs> That's what I want. I want the South Park tree puncher where you get to build your little, uh, what, what they, I almost asked where they lived. Oh my God. You build your own South Park by knocking down one tree at a time. <laughs> I, look, that would ha- that's how you get me to play a tree puncher. <laughs> to make it South Park. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, it's funny because I always attack you over that opinion. But after today, I'm kind of like, geez, like, <laughs> I'm, don't get me wrong. I really like these style of games but man you know you've got uh, you've got Palea you've got the the Disney one that was made by the mobile company I can't remember the name of it um the Valley one or whatever Dreamlight Valley you, yeah you Dreamlight Valley now you got Lord of the Rings has got one you got Hello Kitty that's got one it's like you know they're all built around this Stardew Valley model and it's just like my gosh you know come on yeah <laughs> like can we not get like a twist and the problem is is they all seem to be like around these idyllic settings that are just beautiful it's such a nice little place to live and everybody's friendly like why can't we have one where you take that concept but you don't live in a nice place it's a crappy place and everybody that lives there is an asshole so that way it kind of you know like change it up something yeah <laughs> all right we got a update for Disney Illusion Island called the Mystery and Monolith. A free update that's out today. Do y'all play Disney Illusion Island? I've been like wanting to pick it up when it kind of goes on sale, but I haven't really seen it drop down to like. I'll probably pick it up at twenty bucks if I see it, but I'm probably not gonna buy it if it's not twenty bucks. I saw this when it first came out and was like, you know what, this game looks really cool. But then they showed how tiny. Mickey Mouse and everyone else are like on the screen, and it's like I would mm-hmm. lose them. <laughs> like, if there was like a yeah. a modern version of like a big head mode that made them bigger <laughs> on the screen, <laughs> I would probably be more inclined to check this out. But yeah, I uh, I some I've missed out on this one, and probably just going to continue to miss out on it. Uh, we got our final look at Luigi's Mansion 2 HD before it comes out later this month. Are y'all picking up Luigi's Mansion 2 or are we waiting until 1 also comes to the Switch? We're from to try them out. I'm, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Okay. I'm definitely... Because I feel like as, yeah, I've played 1, 2, and 3 and I, I still feel like 1 is the strongest of the whole series. Mm-hmm. And that's further an argument why, like, why have we not seen 1 again? Because, you know, I think we did talk about this last time we spoke of how, you know, they put it on that shop for like not the 3DS, but the new 3DS. So it was a very, very small window of people that could actually get it outside of, you know, it was a GameCube game, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, ah, man, you know, you've made such a small window of opportunity for people to play that. And then you won't port it over to anything that more people would. I don't don't know. I, uh, I would like to point out that we were corrected on that and it did come out to just all 3ds players it wasn't just a new 3ds game oh okay i was under the perception that it was just for the new 3ds yeah it we got uh, that video we did got a couple of uh corrections <laughs> but uh it's fine uh thank you to everyone that watched that video and no us. i'm I love being corrected. Thank you. I mean, it does. I don't think it. I don't think it means anything. I can't fix anything. But, <laughs> <laughs> but either way, the I mean, the 3ds was still a major selling system. But I don't think it 
Luigi's Mansion itself probably sold that well because I'm going to look this up because I don't want to be corrected again on this. Uh, <laughs> give me uh, just a moment here. Okay, so what I was thinking is that Luigi's Mansion came out on the Nintendo 3DS in 2018. What came out in 2017? <laughs> The Switch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. Switch was out for almost a whole year. Actually, longer mm. than a whole year. And that's when mm. they were still releasing 3DS games, like ports to the 3DS, which I know games take longer to develop and stuff. And they probably wanted to try to extend the 3DS life cycle a little bit longer than they could. But they get they released, uh, what was it? Bowser's Inside Story. Mario Luigi Bowser's yep. Inside Story. Luigi's Mansion and, Met and Metroid Samus Returns were all 3DS games that got released while the Switch was the primary system that was out. Which, to whatever. But still, like, those are the types of games that we should be seeing come over to the yeah. Switch. Because, I mean, they're already... I don't personally... Mario and Luigi is probably the exception to this. But the other two could easily be reworked to play without a touchscreen. I don't know to the extent that Bowser's Inside Story really needed a touchscreen for it to work, but I don't know. There's, They have to know that people want Luigi's Mansion 1 on the Switch. That's what we're full circle here for. <laughs> um, real quick, let's talk about Funko Fusion, which is pretty much like that kind of I think it's Funko's kind of way of doing like a Lego thing yeah. but they're not afraid to use rated M properties or rated R properties because they've got Jurassic World, Shaun of the Dead, Chucky, Battlestar Galactica, Back to the Future. Yeah, they don't they don't care. Uh, but there's over <laughs> 60 characters to play, 20 different worlds to go through. This is kind of like what I would want from a Lego game where they can explore every property known to man that they get involved with instead of just saying well if it's rated r we're not touching it as far as video games go yeah it's a lot of licensing to go through with this game oh yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> it is I, I hope that they, they find some way to like keep each individual world sort of fresh and it just doesn't become kind of like a, a rinse and repeat hack and slash right. no matter where you're at i feel like that's the that's the danger zone that you kind of enter but yeah hopefully all right metal slug attack reloaded the new 2d pixel so. tower defense game <laughs> i love metal slug and i love i don't want to say i love tower defense but i don't know it, it had like moments of sort of um advanced wars so nice. yeah uh we got darkest dungeon 2 coming out on the switch next month uh, Looney Tunes Wacky World of Sports. Oh, Chase, I want to talk to you about Stray. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, if unless I was just, we weren't synced up as far as the uh, uh, stream goes whenever we were watching it today. Around the time that this game came out, you said in our chat, look how they massacred my boy. <laughs> I was actually, I, I had to look, I was having to look for that, uh, that, that animated gif in uh and like i guess the next thing was already showing when i put when I, I sent it but i was like i was like oh my gosh so so the, <laughs> the jury's in that this game just doesn't look as good as the ps5 version right? it doesn't i am ex i am 100 excited for people to play this game that that only have the switch i will say that like if you don't have you don't have anything else to play on i'm i'm excited for you but like Gosh, it just does not look as <laughs> as beautiful as it did on on PlayStation. Well, don't worry, I'm sure they'll sell a ten dollar upcharge to get the Switch Two version. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mio Memories in Orbit looks great. Another it looks game. good. No, like I, I, yeah, I, I when I like before I saw any kind of gameplay, I'm like, this is going to be a Metroidvania game, and yep. it definitely was. Yep. Another <laughs> indie. You talk about a an oversaturated. Industry that's all 2D indie Metroidvania games that all look great, <laughs> but there's so many of them. There's so many of them, and I love every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's new crewmate and imposter roles coming to Among Us, which Among Us is actually the people who leaked that the direct was happening today. 
because they posted they were having a free update going live. Um, a new Just Dance. No surprise there. 40 new songs coming to Just Dance. Uh, that franchise must just sell like hotcakes because they've done a new Just Dance as far back as I can think of like 2014, if not earlier. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is. It is seriously very popular across nursing homes all across the nation. <laughs> like, I, And I'm being serious about that. Like, they really do. Like, it gets those old people up and moving. They love it. So, yeah, they've, they've got their audience. Yeah, I imagine that a lot of old folks' homes probably still use their Wii's for everything and not migrated <laughs> to the Switch. Because I'm pretty sure, like, well, I swear to you, it was like Just Dance 2019, maybe 2020 was the last one to release on the Wii. Yeah. Like, it yeah. went for a long time. Um, okay. We have... Ace Attorney Investigations Collection coming out this September, which is remasters of Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth, and Ace Attorney Investigations 2, Prosecutor's Gambit, the later of which has never been in English. So if you are an Ace Attorney's fan and don't feel like translating that game, you can now play it in English. All right. Phantom Brave The Lost Hero, tactical turn-based game from the creators of Disgaea. It looked like a cutesy anime game. Uh, Farmagia, which is a monster <laughs> combat collecting and farming game. Definitely trying to see you can punch in there. Uh, the next game from the creators of Danganronpa, The Hundred Line, Last Defense Academy. Very stylish looking game. Yeah, I was about to say, I, I don't get into stuff like that, but for some reason, that particular title stuck out to me. Because in this game, you will play as a character who must protect his school from the school invaders for a hundred days. Along the way, Takumi will interact with 15 of his companions who are all trying to reclaim their lost everyday lives. Very interesting. And some of them are going to die. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yep. Uh, Romancing Saga 2 Revenge of the Seven is returning as a full remake coming out on October 24th with complete with English voiceovers, original and rearranged compositions from series creator Kenji Ito. Uh, this one, I think, is a very niche audience, but I really like the anime Fairy Tale and Fairy Tale 2, which is the second, one of the later seasons of the anime can, adapted into a video game. Uh, that's going to be coming out soon, which that looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. And then finally, the new Denpa Men. Is a free-to-play RPG where you must scour radio waves for small creatures. And, yeah, missed this one somehow in there. But I was also in a car not paying attention, so I have an excuse. <laughs> what did y'all think about Denpa Men? Or the new Denpa Men? Sorry. I don't know anything about this type, this <laughs> game. I, I remember I looking. It, I, was like, I was like, oh, this kind of looks okay, but like, I don't know. The, the little picture that I'm looking at looks like a me wearing a dumb costume, which I've only been seeing. It looked kind of like, uh, was it uh, Pikmin? Like, kind of like that style game. Okay. Yeah, you run around with these little derpy dudes following you. I remember when the trailer <laughs> popped up, like, I looked at Maddie and I was like, what is this? <laughs> it was <laughs> such a strange, you know, because, yeah, you and once again, it's one of those where, you know, you get to decorate your own island and fish and, you know. Everything that, you know, goes along with that sort of thing. But I just, yeah, I don't understand the, because I thought maybe you created your own character and those were all like other people playing with you. But no, you collect these strange little men. <laughs> <laughs> you can like, you can dress them up and they, Ooh, a yeah. man collection game. It is. It's a man <laughs> collection game where you, you, you collect <laughs> iron men from the radio waves apparently and you know that would be an interesting concept if it was true you know because it says you know you scour the radio waves what if like and i mean it, it would be impossible because the console would have to have like some kind of fm like transmitter built into it yeah. but what if like it somehow is able to take like an fm signal and generate like some sort of a character that was so specific because if you think about it if they could somehow do it and it was so different enough then you could have characters that like you could only get if you like go to like Washington State or you know anywhere like that because it would morph the radio waves. That would be really awesome. That I mean, it cool. would also you know you would have you know you'd have like one of those YouTube videos of somebody that goes on a road trip to like all fifty states to see if they can collect them all. But I think that would be really awesome, and that's the yeah. first thing I thought of. 
when they talked about, you know, scouring the radio waves, I was like, man, you know, if they could somehow pull that off, that would be really cool. It sounds like a, uh, re- a further improvement upon like 3DS's Street Pass thing. Yeah, so, yeah, you could, yeah. Which instead of it just being like, well, I guess, like, I mean, to your point though, like every, every radio wave's got its whatever, but like, yeah, the 3DS having like, oh, you can swap me's with people. Which is a very interesting thing that, like, I'm surprised it didn't come back in some capacity. Like, why don't we have Street Pass on the Switch? Who knows? I don't know. Do uh, how often do you really carry your Switch around, though? Mm, I don't know. I guess, that, I I guess know. some people might. I guess some people well, might some do people it often, do. though. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely not as many people who probably carry a 3DS around. Maybe they cut it because the Switch is just bigger than the 3DS. But... That was the Nintendo Direct. I asked in our channel community, what grade would you give the Nintendo Direct? And before I tell you the results, Richard, Chase, what would you grade what very well might be the last Nintendo Direct that is specifically for the Nintendo Switch? It would be... I I would have to say a B as well because I, I was really turned off that they didn't even bring up anything about the Erd Tree DLC, which drops on Friday. <laughs> so I felt like that was a lost, you know. No, and I would I would probably give it an A, uh, just because I'm. I'm which, wanna... Would you Would you rebuy Elden Ring if they released it for Switch? Oh, you, of course. Think about how well it would run. Man. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> so, no, I mean, I'd, I'd probably give it an A. You know, I know I was, I was criticizing some things, but. You know, if if I'm basing the grade and comparing it to like, I'll just say the big three. Um, yeah, I gotta give them an A because I really think they're doing things a lot better than both PlayStation and Xbox right now. Yeah, yeah. the majority of the community voted that this was in fact an A. A couple people giving it a B and a C. I think C yeah. is a, C is a little uh, a little too much, but everyone's entitled to their own opinion. So, the good thing is there was no D's or F's. Those are either Sony or, micro, or Microsoft fanboys. That, that they give it to see. <laughs> that's got to be the. That's, that's I will, I I will of. say of the three, uh, what are they called the directs or whatever from all the major companies. I'll say that you know Xbox, Nintendo. I'll say they they, they did better than PlayStation this this summer. Yeah, for sure. Chains me to agree. I, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but. I mean, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we will see. I mean, they, they, well, I'm sure, I'm sure, I, I feel like, I feel like Sony's like, like just really cooking right now. Like they've got like a bunch of stuff like under the hood that we don't, we don't, we don't know about. So well, that I mean, or somebody needs to be fired. <laughs> <laughs> well, think about please, it. Please, please no more layoffs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's why they fired enough. That's <laughs> I mean, think about it though. Like we, we don't really know much about what's, Nintendo's doing next year, right? Except that we know know. Metroid Prime, almost a Metroid Prime 5 because I can't think straight. Metroid Prime 4 is coming out. They have a new console launching next year. So they're saving all their big guns for that. Right. Microsoft has a crap load of games that they slap 2025 on. Now, whether they all hit 2025 or not has remains to be seen. And if Sony's taking a year off, then that yeah. means that they're probably cooking up something great for next year also. Right. And on top of all three of them, Grand Theft Auto 6 is coming out next year. Right. Ne- next year is going to be absolutely nuts as far as I, like... Yeah, I've, I feel like yeah, next year is going to be like an insane year for games. Like, like it, this year has been, been pretty good. Like overall, like I'm, I'm not disappointed with this year, but yeah, next year it's going to be crazy. Yeah, and... That's all the stuff we know about. Anything else could just yeah. come out of nowhere and just be ridiculous. All right. Uh, one last thing before we close out. I do want to talk about some honorable mentions of stuff that we had thrown up as predictions that did not show up. Rest in peace, my boys, Fox McCloud. I really thought there was going to be a Star Fox game <laughs> that was going to show up or just a Star Fox Assault remaster. Uh Personally, also thought that um, either Kid Icarus Uprising or a new Kid Icarus game would be on the horizon, and then uh, my boy Little Mac in the Punch Out scene. Like, no, no love for Little Mac again. Dang, no. <laughs> All right, no. well, 
Oh, go ahead. Oh, no. No, I was just wallowing in, in pity there with the... Maybe, I don't know. Maybe maybe we revisit. I mean, they, they like porting over Wii games, apparently. Why can't we do, like, a punch-out Wii over here on the Switch? Exactly. Yeah. Like, Donkey Kong Country gets ported twice, but we can't get, <laughs> well, we get punch-out. Donkey out. Kong is in punch-out Wii. I mean, there we go. There's your tie-in. That's how you can... <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense. All right. Well, that'll do it for our direct discussion slash reactions to everything. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on it and subscribe if this is your first time here. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Chase, for joining me today. And we'll be back soon with more Nintendo coverage.